Hello and welcome to this special session. I'm Sujeet Nare, Senior Assistant Editor of the Economic Times. I'm joined by my colleague, Pallavi. Hello, I'm Pallavi Chakravarti, Special Features Editor at the Economic Times. Thank you for joining us on this special session with Raj Sundarsan, CEO Altimetric, I, uh, a company that seamlessly accelerates digital transformation to achieve higher revenue, margin, and market share. A seasoned technology and business leader with extensive experience in cultivating successful product development teams around the globe, Raj at Altimetric is responsible for leading and implementing the company's growth strategy. Prior to Altimetric, Raj held leading roles with technology teams at Visa, eBay, and PayPal. Welcome to the session, Raj. Thank you. Yeah, thank you for taking the time and joining us today. Uh, I'll dive into straight into uh, the interview. And my first question to you really is, you know, you've successfully scaled several global development teams over the years around the world. What is your growth strategy for Altimetric? Yeah, no, thanks, uh, Suchesa and Pallavi. Thanks for having me on. Um, yeah, no, that's, a, that's a great question, uh, Suchesa. Uh, I, I think in my past uh, life, as, as you all know, expanding product development team and product engineering teams was to really help the hyper growth companies like PayPal and Visa were having. And how do we really help the business grow and not have product engineering be the obstacle or the hurdle to let the business grow. So we, we really went out and, and got the real talent and looked around uh, geographies to find where the talent is and really bringing in the product engineering rigor and combining them to help the, uh, the businesses grow. And I think that exact same similar uh, issue continues in the, in, in the industry. As I joined Ultimetric, I look at uh, this as a multiplier effect of looking at all our clients in multiple industries and see how do we help them grow their businesses. And, and everybody's in a hyper growth mode or want to kind of uh, uh, transform or even introduce digital businesses in their uh, path to grow their revenues and improve their margins and really get customer stickiness. And how do we really help them uh, you know, to really accelerate this, uh, you know, getting onto digital business, experimenting new businesses, generating new revenue streams, how do you really help them was very important for us. And, and, and the growth for us really comes in, in, in helping these, uh, uh, these clients, be it enterprises, large enterprises, medium-sized enterprises, or even the startups. You know, we work with, um, you know, early stage and late stage uh, startups too. And each one of them are, are in a different stage of their growth. And, uh, and we kind of cater uh, in a different ways to help them. And, and our approach as practitioners has really helped uh, companies grow. And, and also I'm sure we talk, we'll talk about uh, the current situation with COVID and, and that has really shaken the business of how uh, the business um, executives have to look at their business and, and, and remove friction and, and whatever they're doing and quickly move uh, into a digital world. So, so all of those put together kind of gives us a great opportunity, a great runway for us to grow our business. And, and uh, you know, uh, for a lack of a better term, we are, we are growing 30, 40 this year, probably 45% year over year uh, from, from the business we're seeing. And the growth strategy would continue on uh, for us to look at every size of the enterprise we have and how do we help them uh, grow into new areas, government uh, revenue generation, or introducing new products if it's a new startup and, and helping them go get um, you know funding and get the product of the door or mid-sized companies where they really are stumbling, not having good visibility into their own business be because of the lack of investment in really digitalizing their business and helping them. And these are completely fueling our growth and it would continue the momentum is there. And I see the momentum to continue for several years to come. That's great. So what differentiates you from your competitors? You know, is it the difference in approach or is it the uh, different use of technology? You know, I would say traditionally uh, companies which help um, our clients kind of go in a mode of, uh, you know, really, uh, uh, you know, seeking what need to be done for the clients and helping them do it rather than taking a step back and, and kind of act like a practitioner where we are really helping our clients and really understanding and decomposing a problem into more incremental uh, 
uh, way where we could get business outcomes for the businesses. You know, the gone are the days and, uh, where, uh, you know, companies helped uh, clients in a big bang approach. And that is no longer uh, a very, you know, very elusive way for solving issues because the clients need, uh, you know, outcomes to be, and the values to be generated quickly. So we help them uh, as practitioners go and look at what they're doing and kind of decompose their problems into smaller incremental, uh, uh, you know, outcomes which brings in value right away. And uh, if not value, at least gives them a direction of should they continue on this path or tweak or, or, or experiment in a different path to kind of get them straightened out. That approach of you know, bringing in the right talent and applying the right product engineering rigor and, and bringing in this incremental way of delivering things in an agile manner is very important. And along with it is you know, really breaking the silos, I would say, of having uh, having technology and business collaborate and bring in this uh, business outcomes uh, in a very incremental manner that has really helped us and, and the, our clients feel really uh, you know engaged in this this type of an engagement because uh, we don't position ourselves not as uh, either consultants where we give them a strategy and walk away or outsourcers so that we're not there to really. Uh, you know, talk about cost or whatever from that perspective. We are there as practitioners. We've been there, done that for several uh, product companies. We bring that, and then that really helps uh, to really lay the path of, you know, having a point of entry, uh, uh, point of arrival of where they want to go to, but incrementally getting to the point of arrival is what. And then each uh, increments of uh, business outcomes really uh, brings in value for our, for our clients' business. And that's really important in today's world to see that because the landscape is, uh, is changing so rapidly. It's not about you know, some big bang of wait for six to 12 months before I come back with an outcome. Because things change and we have to rapidly pivot. And not only we at the clients have to pivot quickly to, to ensure they're, they're matching up with the, the landscape changes. And I think that's, that's a unique way we bring it uh, bring bring to the table. A lot of other come. I mean, I would not say a majority of them think technology and digital transformation as something uh, is going to enable digital business. But what we believe in is technology, data, and all of those are, are means to an end. And so we get in there to really help them compartmentalize and, and kind of decompose and. Uh, and bring this business outcomes in a very incremental way. And that has really helped us uh, be successful as well as helped our clients be very, very successful in the investments they're making in today's world. Right, Raj. As you handhold uh, businesses uh, towards their goals, uh, what uh, uh, what role does data and analytics play in this? You know, how does digital business really empower growth? If you could just uh, help us uh, understand that. Absolutely. I mean, I think, you know, uh, uh, you know, you, you guys heard the terms of data as the new oil, data as the backbone, data as everything in today's world, uh, especially given uh, what is going on with COVID. A lot of um, the, the big enterprises and mid-sized enterprises are caught up with not really having a real-time visibility in their business. And so uh, hence, unable to make quick decisions, and, and, and quick, real uh, outcome-based decisions, uh, which they could make uh, without, without those insights of uh, data, what they have. That, that is, uh, is what is really not helping them to get out of the rut where they're in today, to qu quickly get out and experiment newer uh, revenue streams, a newer product, or even from a digitalization perspective. So I believe, uh, you know, at the end of the day, they have the data how do we bring that data uh, and, and help uh, from various sources? They have data internally. They have a lot of data from ERP and their CRMs. How do you bring that in, bring in external data where the social media is talking about their company, their brand? How do we bring that data? How do we bring industry level data into the mix and get that data you know, in an incremental manner and creating those single source of truth for the business and providing insights for them is very, very, very important. And then that's how we look at it and we approach data. Again, the, the, the key uh, thing here to note is the incremental manner. There are uh, you know, uh, companies and, and which has gone on 
on a, on a multi-year roadmap of building data lakes and data warehouses and, and bringing, and those are all like technology-led initiatives. And again, it's a means to an end, but, but really how do we get business outcomes uh, quickly for the businesses to reap value from the data they have is very important. And the way I said the V approach is to take a certain business outcome for a certain department for lack of a better term within a business and how, what are the relevant data sources they need to solve that problem and incrementally bring that data and build that data lake incrementally, providing that business value to the business. Hence, uh, you know, really helping them with the insights what they need from decision making, helping insights for them to really think from a resilience perspective. From when I say resilience, the business resilience comes from the supply chain being really resilient or being really a resilient business to knowing end to end of where the orders come in and how do they take it all the way and get, get it to a, to a retail store or bring it direct to the consumer. How do, the, how do we have that visibility? How do we bring in that visibility for the executives to make real quick decisions is very important. And that's how we really get in and help, help them with just incrementally building this with relevant data sources. And the single source of truth we build for each department and then it slowly incrementally becomes the real single source of truth for that business. And, and that happens over a period of time, but it's not that they're waiting for uh, this whole thing to be done, but they get incremental value as we solve for incremental business outcomes, be it in their marketing area, be it in their uh, you know, supply chain area, be it in their manufacturing area, you know, we try to start, uh, you know, solving this. And we're doing it for several mid-sized clients as we speak today, where they're stuck with this not knowing where their order is and their whole supply chain, um, uh, uh, you know, the, the whole uh, value chain of uh, where this whole process is going on. So bringing in that real-time visibility and, and also bringing in real insights of, uh, uh, you know, what the future is and helping uh, executives to forecast uh, their sales. And these are all very important for when you're running uh, business and, and especially in a, in, a, in a constrained environment where uh, you know, every penny counts and where you want to invest. So, so I think uh, uh, I've said enough of data, but data becomes the backbone of what, uh, what we need. At the, at the end of the day, as we all know, data is a backbone and data is new all, but how do you take it and apply it and, and bring value quickly to your clients or quickly to the businesses is very important. And that's, again, I would say breaking the silos between uh, the business and technology is very important because you don't want technology to go building something which is not really relevant for the business. How do you bring them together, or interact on a daily basis and incrementally work to that is uh, really important for us. Mm -hmm. hmm. You know, Raj, when we were doing our research for the questions to, you know, for you, one, something that we came across repeatedly was the concept of digital business. So, you know, our next question would be on that, that what are the core principles of a digital business and how is it different from a digitally transformed business? I would, so let, let me take, uh, uh, I mean, the, the, the distinction between a digital transformation and digital business, there's a lot of confusion in the world. A digital transformation is very tactical in an area where you're applying certain technology to transform an area, which outcome could be efficiencies, outcome, outcomes could be a certain way you can get cost efficiencies or, uh, you know, time to market uh, perspective. For, for example, you know, examples like the digital transformation of uh, moving from on-prem to cloud, people call it digital, uh, digital transformation. Oh, we are digitally transforming. Absolutely great. At the end of the day, it's great cost efficiencies. If I'm a business person, I'm sitting there, I want to see, I want to go quickly grow my business and my revenues. I want to get uh, my products out the door, uh, you know, every two weeks or so, new features got to go out. I want to experiment this and ensure that I'm building this, uh, uh, you know, adjacency to my existing business. I do not want to uh, disrupt my existing business because that's a cash cow. It's generating what it's generating, but I need to kind of experiment in other areas because otherwise I'll become obsolete very soon. How do I do that? That's how the business looks for. They don't care whether you go to cloud you or data prayer. Yes, they, they care about the cost efficiency which comes along with it. I'm just giving a, a good example there. 
Uh, and again, transformation around, uh, you know, certain newer technologies. I want to go use this great data technology. The business says, I don't care. At the end of the day, the business outcome is what I expect for us to get going. So, so the, 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 a short answer to that digital business is how do we help companies to think about generating new streams of revenue, which means uh, uh, quickly bring in ideas to the market and maybe the first time you're not getting it out right, but getting it quickly, failing fast, learning from that and, and getting the next iteration of that product is very important for the business. And the, the way we are living in today's world is very important for us to quickly uh, understand the consumer experience because the consumer experience is, is changing so rapidly uh, the times where we are in. And the business really looks for not only generating new uh, revenues, uh, revenue streams, but also how do you create that customer stickiness? Uh, how do you help the customer to come back and have that repeat business with you, right? And, and how do you remove that whole friction uh, in this whole uh, process when a customer gets engaged? All these are what I give you examples of a digital business where a business really thinks about, right? And, uh, and this really helps them uh, further to be closer to their, uh, to their end consumers, learning from them and, and, and uh, immediately reacting to what they're looking for is very important. And, and I'll tell you several businesses today which are successful uh, and, and you, can, you can count them, right? That they have the best consumer experience and they experiment like crazy. They just get features out of features out of the market and figuring out how do I remove more and more friction for our consumers so we make it easy. And that kind of helps them not only get consumers kind of be sticky to their product, but also helps them to introduce newer products, newer adjacencies, and they just grow their business. And I think for us, that is digital business. And I'm not downplaying digital transformation or technology. All those are very, very important for digital businesses to be standing up. But if you're solving for technology and transformation, not looking at the holistic digital business and the outcome we could get to our business, you're not really solving the problem. You're just, again, I keep saying technology is a means to an end, but the business is what is going to drive what gets invested and what, uh, what we need to take forward. So our focus, whenever we go in, we go in as practitioners, we work with the business, really laying out the roadmap, decomposing their, uh, you know, whatever they're looking for doing from a revenue generation or margin improvement or customer or end consumer stickiness and really laying out a roadmap end to end saying, hey, this is your point of arrival, but this is how we'll get there. And every incremental uh, milestone you're going to have, you're going to see that value. You're going to see uh, what you can tweak and you can pivot. And that is what the business look for today. And that agile way of working and, um, and bringing in these outcomes uh, in a way the business feels it and they can see that every two weeks they're able to see a demo of what they think and, and dream of what as a product feature is very important. And then this, a lot of this is to do with the organization culture as well. So that's, that's what we bring to the table. Our digital business needs technology changes, needs a process and methodology. When I say that, it's more around agile and how quickly can you go around that. And the whole culture of the organization is uh, was important because they got to be starting to think about it incrementally, be able to pivot when they feel that they're they learn something from the market that they want to quickly change those. That's important. The culture change is really, really important. And the whole underlying thing is all driven through their data. So I think a digital, a digital business enablement by, is done through technology or digital transformation of the technology and, uh, and, and the process and methodology, as well as the, uh, the organization culture and the underlying data is what is, fuels it. So that's how I would differentiate between the digital business is kind of the outcome of all of the underpinnings which happens. And having tactically doing a little bit of transformation here and there might not get you that big bang um, you know, outcome you're looking at from a business perspective. I will dig a little deeper there. Uh, we're talking about digital transformation, which perhaps has been one of the lasting uh, impacts that the pandemic will leave on companies the world over. Now, what are specific tools that you offer which will accelerate this uh, digital transformation? I, what we believe, like what we just talked about on uh, the, 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 the key ingredients and the recipe for our digital business to be uh, quickly enabled is the whole technology aspect of it and, 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 and the methodology 
as well as uh, uh, we just talked about uh, the culture change. We usually say that we got to do this without, uh, you know, really disrupting the existing business because at the end of the day, existing business is bringing them revenues. It's now a question of improving their revenues and improving their margins. How do we do this without disrupting their existing business? The way we think about it is uh, we got to do this outside of their existing environment. When I say existing environment, they have the current ERPs or the CRMs running really well. They're doing their job. You know, it's not about going and tweaking that to get a uh, majority of these things going, the new business is going. How do we do something outside of that environment, connected to the environment, obviously, because it's there, that's where all of their core data is. Outside of that environment, maybe in the cloud, get that's where you get the speed and the agility. So we have uh, something called a business digital platform, which is on the cloud, which helps in this whole as aspect of culture. When I say collaboration between business and technology, how do they talk about features? How do they talk about user stories? How do they interact? This platform really helps with that. And then once those are defined, how quickly can we get a product engineering environment stood up? So we can iterate some uh, prototypes and POCs as well as productize this and share it with our with the business. We, we, we have that at the platform. We can quickly set up this environment in the cloud and as well as the engineers could jump on and start creating this, uh, the, the real product features from the user stories, which the business have direct access to this and, and can validate it every two weeks and tweak it as needed. So this whole business digital platform is very, very, very important uh, for any digital business. And that digital business platform is what kind of encapsulates the technology I talked about, the, the culture, collaboration, culture, and the methodology, which is more or less the product engineering rigor uh, and, and the whole aspect of data. This whole four things are bundled into our, what we call as a business digital platform, which quickly enables any of those digital business to get outcomes rapidly. Right. So, you know, we've spoken about digital transformation, technology, uh, and you know various aspects, but you know ultimately it ultimately it boils down to revenue growth, and particularly in the times of pandemic, it has been really difficult for several companies. So how do you uh, you know ensure revenue growth without really disrupting the you know ongoing operations and ongoing business uh, uh, continuity? I think uh, I could give you a couple of examples. One would be a large client where uh, they're trying to introduce new features. Um, where uh, they already have, uh, you know, this example would be payments. You know, they're trying to get, uh, you know, real time real time payments out the door, and, but they already have payments happening in bulk payments and things like that, which is generating a lot of revenue for them. But this is incremental revenue for them. How do you do it without uh, disrupting? That is a very valid question. Is we as we talked about it, we just have to take that newer feature and connect with the existing thing without. Disrupting meaning generating and starting to develop things outside of their environment on the cloud, but connected to that so that anything fails here, you know, rapid detection and rapid fixing happens here, but you're not really impacting their existing business, which is happening. And another example I would say, I mean, that has been very successful. If I, if I say, say that we start incrementally bringing in the newer payment mechanism for them, and they're able to quickly get that feature out the door without impacting, right? The existing business, you can't go with multiple changes. If you get that down, your revenues go down right away, even the existing revenues. So you don't want to be uh, doing that. So how do you kind of create an environment which is experimental in nature without impacting? Uh, your, that is our approach and that's how we address and how that's how our practitioners would go in and decompose a problem and, and, uh, and ensure that uh, those things which are happening which are brand new uh, revenue generation capability doesn't impact the, uh, uh, the existing one. Another example would be, uh, you know, revenue generation is difficult at this point in time where in the pandemic, but it is, it is important to note that it is really a, a challenge for, for companies or executives is because they are unable to make decisions that they don't have the insights of where the friction is during this uh, whatever we're going through pandemic pandemic and then once they know where the friction is this very easy solve to see how do we tweak or really experiment that to uh, you know remove that friction for consumers to kind of continue operating so we bring that we go in and help them 
be it in the order management side of the world, be it in the supply chain of the world, be it in how do we distribute retail, retailers, where, how do we know what is in the retail stores uh, and what is not, you know, how do we reduce their discounting? All those insights, it's there in their data. They're not having enough tools to really look into and to kind of get that uh, incremental revenue for them. So we go in there and incrementally look at their order management, look at their supply chain, manufacturing process and the retail process. How do we get that incrementally solve those um, and bring those insights and the business, you know, really collaborating with us to ensure that we're tweaking it, experimenting and moving the needle. And we have, we're working with some big retailers and uh, big, big supply chain um, companies, which are really getting this, um, this value out of that quickly. And they're able to make decisions quickly now and quickly experiment. So let's tweak this and see this for a couple of weeks. And based on that, they make decisions, right? That's the only way we could do. That's the efficient way, I would say. I wouldn't say only way. That's the efficient way to really see what the how the real world is reacting to something what I just did, rather than waiting for a year to see, oh, my profitably with tanking because of the change I did six months back. So those type of things are very important in, in, the, in the business we do. So we are very, very um, you know, focused on ensuring not to disrupt the existing business. And our approach really, really plays into that on ensuring we bring in value, which is incremental, and also provides uh, the businesses to really experiment. At the end of the day, the business doesn't know completely what it is that they're trying to build. They go out build, experiment, and move on. And that whole aspect of culture and, and uh, approach really helps the business and that really connects well when we talk to the CEOs of the, the chief digital officers of the world or the chief revenue officers, they really connect well and this is exactly what they want to do. And and, uh, and and they jump on the bandwagon right away. Another core, uh, uh, what do I say, core interest of the people that businesses have for a digital transformation is actually simplifying everything. Keeping it simple, I think, is an important aspect of uh, digital transformations and a digital business. How do you ensure that? I'll start off again. I'll, I'll probably, uh, by the end of this uh, interview, sound like a broken record, but it's all about uh, you know decomposing it as an incremental um, value which we bring to the table. So if you take a problem and if you're decomposing it into smaller chunks which could bring real value to the business, that itself is simplification for me. You're simplifying a bigger problem into smaller chunks where you see real value coming to you, right? That's very, very important. That's core of what we think about. The, that's the core of our approach. And, and that's how our practitioners get involved and they really simplify, uh, you know, the huge problem. It just, just, I mean, this is a computer science way of thinking. And I think a lot of people have uh, forgotten about uh, uh, algorithms which really decomposes into smaller problems, solves it and make the bigger problem go away. And that's, we are going back to the basics of doing that for our businesses. And that really simplifies not only in an approach, de-risks the, the investment they're making, as well as kind of makes uh, executives to connect the dots rather than say, hey, you know, I can do this all by this time. Here is how with each of this incremental one will connect to and bring you the value. That's one aspect of it. The second aspect of simplifying uh, the whole aspect is, is around today's uh, in, uh, enterprises are very, very, very siloed. How do we break the silos and bring business and technology talking to each other? That simplifies a lot uh, in the environment uh, in, in today's world. And that culture change is what we also bring to the table when we work with our clients. We work with their technology departments and business department and say, how do we collaborate? How do we talk? How does the technology groups translate what a business is seeking to do? And in a, in a very simple manner, and that that is, uh, I would say, lack of a better term, non-existent in some of the uh, enterprises and some of the industries we have seen because it's always technology having their own roadmap. When I say technology, the IT groups having their own roadmap of doing things and the business queuing up their demand and that IT saying, go away, come back a few months later because I'll have a newer technology that will help you in a better way. You know, that type of uh, mindset has to change. And that's what we come in and accelerate and help them to say, let's bring our practices, let's bring our scrum teams working with your IT technology teams to kind of break those barriers, bring that collaboration culture 
And, and then once that becomes a well-oiled machine, you know, we walk away. That's, that's what we want our, our clients to get to. And we are not there, as I said, we're not outsourcing companies stuck there for a lot of time to just take on mundane task after task. We are there to solve specific problems, specific areas, either we move on to another area to solve problems for the same business or enable their, their technology teams to take on and move uh, rapidly. And, and that's exactly the way we position ourselves as a catalyst uh, for this digital business enablement. Raj, uh, you know, these days, digital or digital transformation or whenever we talk of digital, it's no longer the, uh, you know, it's not the no, longer, no longer a role confined to the CTO or the CIO or the IT department. It has to be, it's, you know, it has to boil down from the top. So how does, uh, what kind of role must a leadership really play in defining the digital construct of a company, of any company? No, this is a very good question. I know um, uh, usually this happens at the CEO level and they say, we got to go out, you know, we got to, uh, you know, start thinking of uh, on digitalizing our business. And then, and, and the things stop at several other levels down. And we've seen this in several enterprises where it's either at the IT CIO level or at the next level of uh, the VPs supporting the CIO said, no, things are going okay. Why do I have to change the way I do things? And, and, and similarly with the business, again, the silos continue to become stronger. The, the one thing for sure, uh, what we have achieved, what we uh, ask the CEOs and the chief digital officers is that we need champions who could within the organization to take that vision from the CEO to digitalize it and help execute. And we are there as catalysts to bring that, but how do we bring that in and, 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 and really implement that? And if that doesn't boil down uh, to, to the next level of uh, leadership within IT or business or technology teams, that, that completely stagnates. And, and we've seen that and we, we call that out and we really want champions who are, who are there as, uh, you know, uh, culture carriers who can help us change that culture, break that barrier and say it's okay to let go of the way we used to do things. We got to move on to change onto this one. And this has happened. And, and this happens only when when uh, the CEO is involved and he appoints a champion who, who has direct access to the CEO and, and that whole change management process takes, takes on. And, and we have seen and we walked away from this. This is where we see that, you know, where there's no champion and it is just you're stuck there and you don't want to get stuck when you know that things are not going to be embraced. It's always an obstacle of why you can't get certain things done. But I think in the course of the last several months, we've seen majority of the, the businesses are changing and it's no longer a question of, you know, the, 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 the old way of work. It's now the new norm. So people are trying to kind of push through and that's, that's really helping, you know, our growth and a lot of, uh, you know, the businesses looking for this type of a change and they got to do it now. And, and uh, otherwise it's a question of existence for a lot of the businesses today if the change doesn't come rapidly. Right, Raj. Thank you for uh, taking the time out. It was, a, it was a great chat with you. You know, as you mentioned, uh, the digital transformation is the need of the hour. It is, the sur as they say, the survival of the fittest. It is now the survival of the most happening digital business perhaps and as you forge uh, the path for these businesses to not only transform but become digital businesses where the silos between business and technology are broken down you are helping businesses across the world to achieve digital transformation thank you raj for taking the time out it's been great chatting with you thank you, okay. raj. you. really great it was a pleasure completely well thank you Sujeta and Pallavi. and thanks for having me on thank you Thank you.